Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and I have the honor of being with, I'm going to embarrass him, one of my favorite mm -hmm. entrepreneurs in New Jersey, Mitch Kahn from Unionware. Mitch, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dale. Hi. The, I really appreciate you taking time to, to be in studio with me here. Um, tell me your origin story. I always like to hear where people grew up and how they became entrepreneurs. So tell me about that. All right. So uh, I grew up in Roseland and Mendham, New Jersey and uh, ended up going to the Wharton School. All right, um, well, where... I got my MBA, so uh, Wharton guys. Great, uh, did not get the entrepreneurial spirit there though. Oh, interesting. Okay. Went from Wharton into finance and okay. worked for Bear Stearns for a couple okay. of years. Okay. And I realized while I was working 20 hours a day <laughs> that I would rather be the client. Right, right. So um, I left Bear Stearns after a two year financial analyst program okay. in okay. Mergers, mer uh, mergers and Acquisitions. Yep and um, just went around the country trying to come up with an idea to start a business. Uh -huh. And uh, my father at the time was uh, part owner of a baseball card company called Score Baseball Cards. Oh, really? Wow, interesting. And they had a deal with a baseball hat manufacturer uh -huh. to manufacture baseball hats for them, and the guy couldn't deliver the hats. And he said, hey, while you're trying to think of what you want to do with your life, why don't you go and check this company out and see if they're worth investing in or see what's going on over there. So I went and I spent a couple of weeks with the guys at the baseball hat factory, uh -huh. and I said, do not invest in this company. This guy owes millions of dollars. He can't keep the lights on. They're going to be out of business in months. And wow. then I went and just went back around, uh, driving around the country, ended up in Boulder, Colorado. Uh -huh. About six months later, he called me and he said, that company went out of business wow. and the bank is auctioning off the assets. Interesting. If they didn't have all that debt, I bet you could start something up there. And I said, very interesting. You know, there's some interesting things going on with baseball hats right now. Mm -hmm. um, up until 1992, Baseball hats were really just a sporting good. They were not a fashion item. Oh, interesting, yeah. Uh, you couldn't go into Macy's or The Gap or Ralph Lauren to get a baseball hat. And um, I thought that that would be a really good market for baseball hats. I started seeing Snoop Dogg wearing a pot leaf hat. Absolutely. And uh, Spike Lee had the movie Malcolm X. There was a hat with an X on it right, that was really right. popular. It was right. a Batman hat. So all of a sudden, baseball hats started to become a statement outside of sports, sports right. world. Right. A, a trending yeah. item, a, a real fashion trend. Yeah. yeah. So I went and I researched uh, how, to, how to bid at an auction. I ended up paying the mechanic for the company some money to work for me that day and tell me which machine to buy, uh -huh. bought all the machines that we needed, struck a deal with the landlord to rent the same space, and then went to the labor union that represented the workers who used to work there right. and said, can you get me all the workers back to work here? We were up and running in about a month. Really? Wow. Yes. That, uh, that is an amazing story. Yeah. We, we initially started out going to customers of that company, right. uh, but there were really not that many. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I, I started pounding the pavement in New York City hitting fashion companies up, saying you should sell baseball hats. Now, where was the company headquartered? It was in Jersey? Or it was, was in it? Jersey City. Jersey City, okay. Jersey okay. City, okay. yeah. So right across the river. Right? I had about six employees. Um, mm -hmm. I met initially with Ralph Lauren wow. and Nordstrom. Neiman Marcus, Izod, Gantt, uh -huh. and we were really successful. I could not believe how easy it was to get sales. Interesting. They loved the idea. And I what year again was this? This was 92. 92, okay, so it uh, was the right time. Yep, I, I pitched them on, um, if you have excess fabric, give it to us, and we will make baseball hats for you. We'll sew your labels on the outside of the hat. We weren't doing embroidery yet. Right, right. And one, one uh, stroke of luck was that one of the, um, one of the innovations at the time was the outlet center, which oh. was starting to go all over, uh, starting mm, to be built right. all over the country. So these brands needed a, needed a place, they needed products to sell that their customers weren't presently selling because they didn't want to compete with their department stores mm -hmm. that were selling their products. So Polo said, we need, ba we need products for outlet centers. Baseball hat's perfect. They, wow. they sent a truck of fabric over to us. One truckload of fabric lasted us two or three years. Really? Wow. Yes, it was so, I oh, mean, it was, wow. yes. So that got us started. And then by 1994, all of that business went to Asia. All of it. All of our customers, one by one in a matter of months, Interesting. just started falling off the- That quickly, the, just in a matter of months? Matter just, of months. There were wow. some, uh, I guess some factories it really started in South Korea, but they really figured out how to make the baseball hat right. very inexpensively, and we just couldn't touch the price. Right. Um, so I, at that point, I had I'd gone from six to maybe about 35 employees. Wow. And uh, we came up with our own idea. It was way too early, but mm. we were making hats out of hemp fabric. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, okay. 1994. We launched the 
a product at the 25th anniversary of Woodstock, uh, really? at Woodstock 94, <laughs> and we sold like 2,000 hats in about two days. Wow. It was really, it, it, and ended up um, going to trade shows and getting commercial business out of it, selling mm -hmm. them to eco stores and head mm -hmm. shops and record stores, mm -hmm. getting how, how custom did work. That, did you come up with that idea? One of your, play, one of your uh, employees came up with that? Or um, I think I was, a in a, I was in a room full of friends saying, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I have these 35 people. <laughs> we right. just lost, we're losing all of our business really fast. And there were some jokes and someone said, hey, I read this article that people are making hats out of, uh, making fabric out of cannabis. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You could make hats out of that <laughs> and then pff, light bulb yeah. went off. And uh, so it. we, we named the company Headcase, uh -huh. and um, <laughs> that was really popular for about five years or so, okay. and then that started to die off. It, it, it didn't come back for another 15 years, mm -hmm. and by around the year 98, 99, we realized, you know, when we started this business, there were probably a thousand hat factories. Mm -hmm. Now there's probably 25. Right. The, China just put everybody out of business right, at that right. point. Um, and we said the, re the only reason we're selling some of these people is because A, we're made in USA, mm -hmm. and B, we're the only union shop left. Yeah. So we realized without even trying that we had built this market of labor unions that right. wanted to buy Teamsters Local 237 right. baseball hats. Mm -hmm. And we changed the name to Union Wear and started selling baseball and hats to Union. Yeah, that, that, was, was, that was like 90, 98 was 98, when we changed okay, 90, the name. Okay, okay. Um, had a, a, a big stroke of luck in 2000 when, um, until 2000, there really was not a big political merchandise business right, right. Uh, because the, there was no infrastructure for it. They didn't have stores. Right. But by the year 2000, e-commerce became somewhat of reality. People right. could order goods online with a credit card and pay for it. And uh, one of the big users of that was the political campaigns. Right. They started raising money online. Right. So the Gore campaign decided they wanted to give away a Gore Lieberman baseball hat that was uh -huh. union made in America uh -huh. for anyone who donated a certain amount of money to their campaign. Right. And we got that contract. Wow. And that opened up a new market for us, which was the political business, which has been a real core of our business mm. for the last uh, 20 years already. Um, so now we're making hats for labor unions and political campaigns. Right, right. And then the next 10 years were just about growth. Right. Um, right. We, what about uh, high schools and other things? Did you do high school things, things or, or no? You know, it, it, even to this day, the first question we ask a customer when they say they want to buy hats from us mm -hmm. is, do you have a compelling reason to pay a premium for a made in USA product? Because mm -hmm. anyone who's spending $1,000 on a product is probably going to spend a few minutes and realize they can get this product less expensive right. with a made in Bangladesh or a made in China label on it. And we just, so high schools kind of fall into that category. Oh, interesting. Yes, interesting. I mean, schools are generally strapped for cash. Yeah. They put these products out for bid. And unless they specify it needs to be made in USA, no one's going to win that bid using our, our products. Right. So we don't do a big team business. Uh, there are certain categories that we do, and we kind of discovered that over the next 10 or 15 years as we were growing. Right. Um, so in, in 2008, when the federal minimum wage increased, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, up until that point, New Jersey was probably double, almost double what it was for the rest of the country, almost like it's going to be in a few years right. if there's no federal minimum wage increase. Right. We had a tough time competing with other made in USA facilities mm. for military contracts. Right. But when the federal minimum wage increased, we started bidding on military contracts and it, it, leveled, very, the it leveled the playing field and right. very quickly became about a third of our business. Oh, so interesting. Wow. we got into the military business and uh, we also invested a lot of time in, in building out lean manufacturing systems for our factory to mm. make us more competitive. Right. Um, so we, once we had that under our belt, we wanted to expand to other products. We bought a bag factory that okay. was located in East Newark, okay. uh, moved them into our facility, and then all of a sudden, double, double the size. So we had twice so, as many so employees. So you're doing bags now, too? And, and, um... 2008, we started making bags, Interesting. backpacks tote bags, That's that true. factory came with a contract to make tote bags for Vineyard Vines, who's okay, still yeah. one of our biggest customers. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, that, that helped yeah. us get somewhat back into the fashion business. Right, right. And um, it, it also opened up some other, uh, other types of businesses for us. We're making luggage, we're making garment bags, wow, wow. Um, and uh, binders and portfolios. And 
We, it was, we really started to hit our stride by around 2010 and okay. 2011. And part of the reason for that is that's when labor prices in China started to go up. Wages right. in China started to go up around the time of the Great Recession here. Right. Our wages remained somewhat flat right. during that time. So while we weren't competitive with China, mm -hmm. we were kind of in the ballpark on a lot of products. And as you get in the ballpark, more people are going right, to buy from right, you. Right, um, right. But if the difference is uh, you know, just a little bit, they're going to say, you know, buy American. Exactly. And, 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 and there's, a, you know, there's a, a, a demand. You know, remember the Wharton, the, the elastic and elastic demand. And so you, uh, that's that's great. So now, 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 before we talk about, I mean, you, you've just been, done some amazing pivots over the years. Um, you know, there's been, there was talk before the pandemic about getting rid of plastic bags. Mm -hmm. So that's good for your business. Uh, yes, that, yeah, that, right? that was good for, for uh, manufactured tote bags. Right, right. Definitely. Right. And, and, uh, and so I, I see that yeah. almost as the hat, you know, because I think about it myself. Well, you know, we have collected all these bags and so on, and you do that, that going forward. So, so manufacturing lives in the United States, is what you're saying. Is it that, it's not dead. You know, people think it's, it's dead. They don't realize that, you know, I'm part of the, the manufacturing group here in New Jersey. They're talking about 20,000 jobs are needed in manufacturing. And a number of our Fairleigh Dickinson Rothman members are manufacturing. So it's, it's great, and I want the audience to know that, that there are opportunities in manufacturing if you're, if you're a true entrepreneur like, like Mitch's. So let, let's talk a little bit before, we'll, we'll get going before the, the break. Uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, you, uh, this is a tough time. It's been a tough time for you. So talk to me about what's been going on the last, last year or so. So beginning of the year, we were about to have a year like no other. We right, had the right. presidential the beginning election, of 2020, right? yeah. beginning of 2020, right. presidential election. There were 17 presidential candidates right. we had contracts <laughs> with to make merchandise. Right. It was crazy. We also had the Olympics this year, which we had a contract right. to produce hats right. for, and the census. Wow. And those are wow. three big events that wow. require Made in USA products. Right. And within a three week period at the beginning of March 2020, Everything was canceled. Wow. All the candidates dropped out. Wow. The remaining candidate, Joe Biden, they closed their merchandise fulfillment facility and turned off the, the website basically for about wow. two or three months. Olympics was postponed, wow. census was postponed. Wow. Um, and at that point, we had about 180 workers because we were gearing up for these events. Well, Mitch, Mitch, stay there because I, I want, what, when we come back, we're going to take a commercial break. I want you to talk about your state of mind because that's what entrepreneurs need to hear. What were you thinking when all this imploded? So we'll be right back after this commercial break with uh, Mitch Kahn, president of Unionware. All right. Workers in the greater Philadelphia and South Jersey area. So join me every week, 12.30 on Thursdays during your lunch break and now on Fridays at 9 and 9.30 p.m. We'll see you next week. This plus this equals this plus this and this. Don't drink and drive. What makes a temple owl? Meet Stella. She's wise, fierce, and she's not alone. Temple University, where owls call home. We are the cherry and white. The city is our classroom, and we lead the rush hour, making our mark on every field around the world. A world without temple, well, that's like the sky without the North Star. Temple, never stopping. The family law firm of Shemtob Dragonoski Taylor will help you move through and beyond your divorce. We are a full-service boutique family law firm located in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. We handle cases in Montgomery County, Chester, Bucks, Delaware, and Philadelphia counties. We have six highly experienced lawyers and have represented clients for more than 30 years regarding these issues. Our clients depend on us to sort through the complicated issues involved in divorce and division of assets, spousal and child support and custody. We listen to them, we gather the information, and we help them make informed decisions. We pride ourselves in our knowledge and our experience. We try to settle cases when we can, but we zealously advocate for our clients at trial as experienced and successful litigators. If you need help on any of these family life issues, please call us for an appointment at 215-542-2105 or check us out on our website 
at www.shemtablaw.com. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Why buy local? When you shop with local businesses, you're spending your money on more than just the item you're buying. You're adding a building block to your neighborhood. It starts with a single purchase, maybe a cup of coffee, groceries from a local co-op, or even a shiny new bicycle from one of the nearly 28 million small businesses nationwide. Your money doesn't stay in the till for long though. Local business owners use the money to create a lot of economic activity in your neighborhood, like buying from suppliers, many of whom are also local businesses, paying taxes to the city, which builds and maintains the infrastructure we all rely on, employing local workers, contributing to 65% of the net new jobs each year. Add this all together and you've got a recipe for a happier, healthier, more connected neighborhood. Now that's an investment worth making. Welcome back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, with Mitch Kahn of Unionware. And so before the break, we were talking about uh, that time last year when everything imploded, the Olympics and, you know, and, and the election and all that stuff. So, so I, I, what was your state of mind as an entrepreneur? I want, I want entrepreneurs to hear how the best do it. I mean, you must have been, did, were you depressed? Were you angry? What, 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 what were you thinking? I, I think I was just single-mindedly looking at what we should be doing next. Right, right. And I was reading the, reading the paper and watching the news constantly, right. which is a habit that I still have from that time because I, I realized that's where you find out what to do next. Right, right. And um, for me, I was starting to see shortages of a lot of products and I said, we can probably make these products. We've never made them before. Mm -hmm. Let's take some time and uh, when I say some time, 24 hours, right. <laughs> there's a ticking time bomb here. Right. And let's just brainstorm every yeah. single product that we can manufacture. So, so, so the mindset, let me stop you there. So the mindset is when there's a pro when you have a challenge, there's an opportunity somewhere else, is really is what I'm hearing, your mindset is. There's always an opportunity. Whenever one bad thing happens, there's some good, and, and that's a lesson for the audience that a lot of entrepreneurs think that I can only do this, so I'm, I'm really in trouble. I love that mindset. I think it really comes from manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, in manufacturing, there's a theory, uh, the, the theory of constraints, and you can only produce at as many widgets as your slowest operation. Right, but right. when you speed up that operation, mm -hmm. by definition, there's going to be another operation that's the slowest operation. There's right. always a bottleneck. Right. So I think that way with economics. Yeah. If there's yeah. something's overheating, that means that there's a bottleneck somewhere. Right. And if you can be a solution to that bottleneck, you can kind of- well, that's you know. Brilliant advice, that really is brilliant advice. Thank you, thank you. The, uh, all right, so here we are, we're, we're at the stage, the Olympics and everything is, and so, so uh, what do you do? So, uh, so we, we developed this list of products and I contacted the vice chairman of, uh, international vice chairman of the labor union that represents our workers. Right. They had become affiliated with the SEIU, mm -hmm. which is the healthcare workers union. Right, right. And I said, hey, is there any way you can talk to people at SEIU or the hospital association, who's their negotiating partner, mm -hmm. and see if we can help produce some of these products mm -hmm. for them? And I got a call two hours later from the hospital association. Wow. And they said, yes, you can produce these things for us hospital gowns and face shields wow. two things I'd never made before never really seen before wow. um, they were isolation <laughs> gowns actually he sent me pictures uh -huh. and when I saw the picture of the face shield I said this is gonna be easy right. this right. is the clear plastic that we use in our binders and mm. this is the foam we use in our backpack straps and these are the headbands that we use in our baseball hats I, I have this stuff here I can make a sample for you today Perfect. we made a sample we messaged to the city and we got went into production the following week now do you have to redo your machines one of my clients does high-speed machine development Did you have to redo the machines or how, how did you um, we that? we did not have to redo machines okay. for that particular operation mm -hmm. um, but there are times that we, we just got a big contract for masks 
masks. Okay. And we don't have enough machines set up to make masks. So we have to buy attachments okay. and reprogram certain machines. Okay. But okay. it's maybe, a, you know, it's not expensive and it's a couple okay. hour process for each machine to do that. So okay. that does happen when you have to take 100 people and have them all do something different. Right, right. Uh, but we, we had the right machines to make all of these products. Okay, and so you started right. doing that. How many months did you do that for? Or so still... we, d we manufactured face shields and gowns almost exclusively for, I'm gonna say three months, okay. up until about the end of June. Okay. And then uh, the country was able to get products in from China much less expensively at that point, right. and we saw the business just disappear and dry up pretty quickly. Wow. Um, fortunately, we were in the, still heavily involved in the political merchandise business, right. uh, and the Biden campaign actually sold a lot of merchandise, Interesting. more than we'd ever seen before, a lot more than we'd ever seen before, and that really carried us through the rest of the year. Wow. Um, that and we, our military business was still there, uh, they were not in any rush to get their material, but we had a contract to produce it. Mm -hmm. So we were at full employment uh, by the end of the year. Right. Wow. Um, wow. And then you know, the election was over. Right. Our regular business, which is mostly promotional products for unions and people wanting Made in USA uh, accessories to put their logo on right. for events, is still dead because right. people are not having in-person events. Right, right. So we were facing a significant decline in business and that's when we really had to pivot again and that's the pivot that's going on now, yeah, yeah, which is yeah, a pivot yeah. to government business. Interesting. Increasing our share of our business from around 30% to around 60% mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right now. Um, and, and what kinds of things for government? What are you? Uh, what so are you some of the new things that we're producing, we're making masks okay. for the US government. Okay. Uh, we're making backpacks. Mm -hmm. Uh, we make garment bags for the Air Force. We're making firefighter backpacks for the Forest Service. It's oh, really? a new contract the, for this, us. The, the fireproof backpacks? They're, uh, they're, they're backpacks to carry gear okay. on, on uh, firefighting gear, okay. uh, on helicopters and, uh, and other types of you know, transport equipment for Actually, firefighters. Wow, wow. Um, and, uh, and we have been successful in, in that pivot. Mm. Um, we, uh, I, I, we hired a... Uh, the director of military sales for Brooks Brothers, okay, okay. Um, when they shed that division in their chapter 11, right. said, well, you know, can you come on and help us get some contracts in areas that we never thought of before? And Brooks Brothers was making the dress uniforms mm -hmm. for, for a number of the military divisions. Okay. And she walked in and, and introduced us to a lot of different potential contracting officers and prime contractors, and, and we've gotten business from that. We've gotten enough business to hire everybody back who used to work for us. So wow. that's been fantastic. So, so let, let, let's walk through this idea. So how did you get to, you just, you just heard that, that Brooks Brothers was having financial challenges and you can just call them up, or how did you get this person? How? So um, I, as soon as I started hearing the word stimulus right, right. come out of Biden's lips, right. I said, okay, that means that the government is gonna be dropping potentially trillions of dollars on the economy. Right. And if you're doing business with the government, that's going to be a source of revenue for you when your commercial business is, 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 is dried up. Right. Um, so I had that thought going on in my head, mm -hmm. and then uh, the woman who we hired actually reached out to me on LinkedIn. Oh, so, so oh, really, okay. And she okay. said, well, I'm interested, can I, and I said, yes, wow. this wow. is perfect timing. And wow. we, if we had a phone interview, I think I hired her about a week later. Wow. Um, so she reached out to you, you didn't She do... reached out to us, um, had seen a lot of uh, news stories about us doing work in masks mm -hmm. and people PPE, um, which was a lot, a, a, most of that was government business. Right, right. So she was looking for a job and, and it just worked out well. Now have competitors kind of uh, copied you with, with this union? Are there, are there any other, many other union shops that are trying to? I don't think anyone has thought, I want to get more business, so I'm going to become union. Right, right, right. Um, right, right. That's, that's just, uh, yeah. that, and that just hasn't happened. Interesting. Um, Interesting. The union's actually been in, they were instrumental in landing us this most recent mask contract. Right, right. Um, um, so they've been very helpful in, in getting us government business as well. We, we've, we have no problems being a union shop. See, then that's one of the things that consumers need to really understand. So obviously I started these things on Entrepreneur Zones, and I'm a big believer that if you want to reduce property taxes, support your local businesses. Buy locally, buy, because you know as much as you save a little few dollars here and there going online, by supporting locally, you're helping the, the, the local baseball team. You're, you're creating rateables for the local. And so we as consumers need to understand we've got to support 
American local New Jersey community businesses. And it just it's just good business. And I don't know why people don't seem to really understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people people don't realize that they're investing in their community yeah. when they buy local, yeah. particularly when they buy something that's made locally, yep. because manufacturing is very labor intensive. To make a you know, thousand backpacks a week, you might need a hundred people to work there. But right. to sell a thousand backpacks a week in a store, you might only need four people to work there. Right, right. And to sell to sell a thousand backpacks out of a warehouse, you might need one person right, right. to work there. Right. So it, it is that does make genuine shockwaves in the economy in your community to to buy locally manufactured goods. Well, well, this has been just uh, every time we talk, it's a wonderful lesson on, on entrepreneurship. You know, when we think of entrepreneur state of mind, I see your picture, Mitch, pivoting, doing the right thing, helping people and making money doing it. So you can really, really do that. The, the thing about these shows, they go by so quickly. So we're really at the at the end of time. So I just want to thank you so much for, for coming and, and keep up the good work. And and I know this won't be your last pivot. You're going to pivot to something else and uh, we'll have you back and hear what's going on next year. So. Um, again, I'm, I'm Dr. Dale Caldwell. This is the Entrepreneur State of Mind with Mitch Khan, president of Unionware. If you are looking to buy a bag, a hat, look up Unionware. What's the web, web address? It's unionware.com, and that's union and W-E-A-R dot com. And you can look us up on LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter as well. Mitch, again, thank you very much. Thank you all for, for watching. We'll see you the next time on Entrepreneur State of Mind.